good morning we'll continue with the chapter 6 11 standard economics in that next topic is that a rent this rent was a, a given a ricardo theory of a rent it's given by the economics called as david ricardo first we'll see the what is a rent so rent means when you are using any other land means for that land owner we have to pay the in the form of a price or a reward that is called as a rent but in the economic term terms when we are using the part of a land means full land or a part of a land the tenant has to pay to his landlord that is called as a that payment is called as a rent so this rent is a theory is developed by the david ricardo david ricardo economics famous record so he has given some assumption for his theory the first assumption is that the land differs in fertility that means the land which is near to the river and land which is far away from the river it have a different fertility next uh, the law of diminishing returns operates agriculture that means when the land is keep on using year by year means uh, it fertility it won't destroy but it can be reduced that's what diminishes next is the rent depends upon the fertility and the location the land which is near to land where the land which is near to river it have a more fertility so automatically the rent also will be increasing next is the theory as in perfect competition should be there when we are using this uh, theory next uh, there is a existence of marginal land and no rent land that means uh, when the uh, the land which is far away from the river means uh, the fertility will be less only so that land is called that means expenses will be equal to the yield and there is no profit at all so that land is called as a no rent land next is the land has a certain original and indestructible power that means the nature naturally the land will have some power which cannot be destroy its fertility or destroy any other power what is there in that land so and when this theory is applicable only for the cultivated land only and also one more condition ricardo has given this the the most fertile land only first it should be cultivated so for this the ricardo has given the example uh, assume that some people of people wanted to settle in the island in that island there are the three category of a land a b and c a is a most fertile land b is a less fertile land c is a least fertile land so first set up a group go and settle in that land in the island so they wanted to cultivate the first according to the condition the first fertile land it should be cultivated so first cultivate that is a grade land cultivated at the end they got a 40 bags of a paddy next uh, after some days of after some years a second group of people wanted to settle in the same island so uh, the population started increasing to meet the uh, necessary of a food or to fulfill the needs of a uh, people the population keep on increasing they wanted to cultivate the second set of a land that is a b grade land so they wanted to cultivate that b grade land the final yielding final output is a uh, uh paddy means 30 bags of pack when compared to a grade and b grade the surplus what it is means 10 bags of surplus so that 10 bags of surplus is a rent for the a grade then uh, after some years uh, or sub, some days uh, the other set of third group wanted to settle there in the island so again they wanted to cultivate the c grade land so in that c grade land uh, and that is the least fertile land so when they cultivated means uh, the uh, amount whatever the labor and capital used is a uh, same only a grade whatever how much they use b grade how much is the same amount only they are using in the c grade also but the yielding is 20 only that, that means the expense is equal to yielding there is no profit at all so if it that is a case means uh, a grade land when compared to c a grade got us 20 bags extra b grade got a 10 extra so the 20 is the rent for a 10 is a rent for b grade land so here will will come to the c grade land 
when the C grade land, whatever the expenses, what you are doing is equal to yielding. That means there is no rent at all. So there is no profit at all. So that land is called as a row, no rent land. And the other A and B, it gives a rent. So that land is called as an intra-marginal land. So this can be explained using the table. See here, you can see the table. You can table, you can see A, B and C is there. 40 bags, 30 bags, 20 bags. We can compare, they are comparing from the 40 bags compared with the C. How much it is getting? 20. So, 40 minus 20 when they are comparing. And the C grade land, it have no yielding. That means there is no profit is nil. That's why that land is called as a no rent land. So, this can be, this theory can be explained using the diagram according to David Ricardo. You can see the diagram here x axis for the various grade of land y axis is for the yield per acre so the bar diagram bar it is a what is a rectangle standing just above the respective basis that is o a is a, a grade land a b is a b grade land b c is a c grade land you can see here uh, the last c grade land there is no rent at all so there is no profit at all the yielding is a nil zero so that that is called as a no rent land. Here you can see other two A and B grade land are intra margin. It has a uh, some rent that is shaded area is a rent giving extra yielding a surplus giving. So that shaded area is called as a economic rent. So this theory is also have some criticism. First criticism is that uh, the most fertile uh, land it should be cultivated first they are uh, ricardo saying that that is cannot be possible historic historically that is wrong there are other economics as criticize, criticizing that one next uh, this theory assumes a rent does not enter into the price but in reality rent can be entered into the price next we'll go for the quasi rent Quasi rent in the sense, when you are using land, we have to pay the rent. Apart from that, man-made material is also used by the persons or a firm will be using. For that also, we have to pay the rent. That means a plant machinery, it can be used. So, according to, it is a derived by Marshall. So, Marshall is what he is telling means, the economics Marshall, what he is telling means, uh, we can earn the more surplus income it can be earned when the demand is increasing but it can be only a short period only not in the long period according to Marshall. So there is a comparison between the rent and quasi rent. First one uh, a rent only for the land natural resources you can say. Quasi rent means man-made appliances that is a plant machinery what we are using in the firm it can be defined. Next, uh, supply of a uh, land is fixed forever. That means the land, whatever it gives uh, resources or uh, fertility, it is uh, it's permanent only. Next, uh, man-made appliance, it can only for the shorter period only. It can destroy it. Next is, uh, it can be, uh, rent can be entered into a price, but the quasi rent cannot be entered into a price. So, to calculate this one, there is a formula, quasi rent they given, total revenue minus total variable cost. Next, we will go for the modern theory of rent, demand supply theory of rent. So, according to your other modern economics thought that all the factor of production are same only. So, there is no need, there is no difference between them. So, whatever the Ricardo has created this theory rent is unnecessary, it is not usable or it's no need at all there. So, other economics as Robinson and Balding has created a, a other rent theory. That theory is known as a modern theory of rent. So, according to them, rent is a difference between actual earning and transfer earning. So, here uh, transfer earning means minimum payment has to be given to the particular factor of production. Why means they have to retain its presence use. So that presence, retain its presence use what we are earning or what you are paying. That is called as a transfer of 
earning. So these are all about the rent theory. Thank you.